Yeah, welcome everyone to my talk about what can university libraries do for the Open Research Knowledge Graph. Thank you very much for the invitation to the Kyoto University Symposium, Scholarly Publications as Open Data and University Libraries. And um, before I start to talk about how university libraries can support the OKG, um, I want to motivate maybe a bit why we need the OKG and why it's so important to contribute. So you all have uh, maybe listened to the introductory talk about the Open Research Knowledge Graph. What we are basically addressing with the Open Research Knowledge Graph is um, the flood of publications and um, organizing this flood of publications because researchers are drowning in this flood of publications. We have dozens of millions of new publications published every year. And even in very narrow research fields, it's very difficult to keep oversight and navigate through this flood of publications. So we need a new mechanism, how to organize scientific knowledge, scientific contributions. And that's exactly what we do with the Open Research Knowledge Graph, where we aim to organize uh, research results in terms of contributions which are made by specific um, scientific articles for specific research questions, for example, related to climate change, so that you can juxtapose different contributions and see what are the advantages and benefits of different approaches, what are the conclusions, uh, the insights gained from different research studies. So, um, we want to use the metaphor of a research um, knowledge graph. Basically, a knowledge graph um, allows to structure, to semantically organize knowledge in a graph structure uh, so that it's on the one hand machine and on the other hand also human readable, so that both humans and machines can collaborate. If we look a bit on um, the resources we spend on research and development, uh, we spend globally 1.7 trillion for research and development. So uh, that's an amazing large number um, of investments into research and development. And you can see on the right hand side how that breaks down into different countries. You can see that United States and China are the top um, uh, investors into research and development. And then Japan, also Germany and many other countries. Uh, so a large share of the gross domestic product, um, often between two and 3% in highly developed countries are invested into research and development. And due to this flood of publications, um, I think a large share of this money is not very efficiently used and not well invested. I think 20, 30, maybe even 40% of that investment um, is wasted because we researchers don't have a good overview of the state of the art. We do things um, duplicate, we uh, repeat uh, things, and uh, that makes this investments not very efficient and effective. So with the ORKG, we address this challenge. It's an, the Open Research Knowledge Graph is an open science, open source, open data, and open knowledge infrastructure. And universities can contribute in a number of ways. University libraries can contribute in a number of ways. So on the one hand, uh, they can help increasing awareness for the Open Research Knowledge Graph. Many researchers, of course, um, subconsciously understand that this flood of publications is not really helping um, and it's not the best way, but they don't have an alternative. And we need to show them that with the Open Research Knowledge Graph, there is an alternative and there are also other um, services out there. So in order to showcase and to onboard researchers, we need to create, of course, examples, uh, for example, comparisons for presenting the state of the art for a concrete research problem. And with these examples, we can demonstrate, we can help researchers to organize their research and how they can uh, apply the open research knowledge graph for their uh, purpose and uh, their domain and their fields. We should help researchers then to create content. Create content in the ORKG means to create the state of the art comparisons, like tabular comparisons of different studies addressing a certain research problem. 
um, or literature lists, visualizations, smart reviews. I will show you uh, some of these in a minute. Um, and then once researchers are able to create this content, they can run domain-specific observatories. So for a specific research question, for example, addressing societal challenges like climate change, like COVID-19 pandemic, renewable energy, circular economy, and so on, you can create observatories which organize the research and the knowledge related to this specific challenge. And these observatories uh, then also make the contributions, the curations, the um, organizations which contribute to this observatory visible. I will show you some examples of these observatories also soon. And we can, of course, also collaborate on integrate the open research knowledge graph with other research infrastructures, for example, open access repositories, research data management, and so on and so forth. So, um, about the implementing the ORKG in humanities and multilingual environments. Um, this is something we didn't have so much in the focus uh, so far. So currently the coverage of ORKG examples in humanities is still sparse. There are some examples, I will show you some in a minute, but we need much better coverage there. In natural sciences and engineering and life sciences, we have already many nice examples and you could help us creating such examples in humanities. Uh, we think that the ORKG can be a very valuable tool also for humanities, um, but we need more experimentation there and more of these examples. And then about multilingual environments where English um, is not the only language or where other languages, non-English languages are used, uh, the ORKG can already be used. So you can create labels in different languages, um, but we need, of course, better support um, than English, and that's on our to-do list in our development cycle. And if you have concrete ideas, we will be happy to discuss them with you. Yeah, let's maybe look at some examples. And I'm um, shifting to uh, my presentation. So, you can um, see here, for example, the list of observatories which we have available already in the ORKG. So the idea of these observatories is organize knowledge in a particular area um, for in a specific domain and then also acknowledge um, the libraries, the organizations, the research institutes and the people who contribute to organizing this. Uh, so let's maybe select um, one of these, um, we can take the COVID-19 one, which we created as an example. So you have here on the left-hand side, a number of research problems which are related to COVID-19, for example. Uh, we have the organizations which are involved in curating and supporting this observatory. And we have the members, so individual people who contribute to the creation of content. And then in the lower part, we have um, like visualizations, figures, we have comparisons and, and other ORKG content uh, related to this specific um, research field or research domain. Of course, such observatories also belong um, to an area of science. Here in that case, we have, um, it belongs to life sciences, to microbiology, to virology. But in virology, you can have different observatories. Um, for example, this is one for COVID-19, but you could also have one for HIV or many other diseases addressing then um, particular research challenges in this area. Also, the organizations are important, so we can actually look also at the list of organizations. The aim of the Open Research Knowledge Graph is really to be an open infrastructure, so then all organizations can contribute and will also be acknowledged and that the content created by these organizations um, is uh, acknowledged here. So we, for example, have already quite a long list of organizations here contributing to the ORKG and um, each of these organizations then um, can, for example, run some of these observatories and um, help organizing content in a specific uh, domain. So another example I wanted to show you, another feature, um, are benchmarks. This is something which is particularly important for computer science. 
And um, we can here create um, benchmarks and overview uh, research related to specific benchmarks. For example, let's select here the benchmark or the area of image classification, which is one task in computer science. And there we have different kind of benchmarks. Benchmarks are basically data sets where different algorithms or approaches can be evaluated on. And uh, one popular seems to be here the flowers um, benchmark. We can select this one and we can then uh, get an overview on the research addressing or um, measuring um, the algorithms according to this benchmark. And we can see how the different research approaches develop over time, um, how they perform according to the benchmark. And we can also change um, the uh, visualization here uh, for example, neural architectural search and um, change the visualization. And on the lower part, we basically see the papers who contribute to this particular benchmark here. So that's one example which I wanted to show you. Another example are literature lists. So if you go um, to uh, the view tab and then you see literature lists, so that's a new feature which we just released a few weeks ago. Um, we can create as an easy entry for researchers these kind of literature lists. So a literature list is an organized list of um, bibliographic references. So we have here a title, for example, here in that case, the title is production and use of videos and requirements engineering. We have a section with some background information. Um, and then we have different sections, like the one production and use of videos for requirements elicitation. And then we have a list of references here. So this can be a long list, um, but we can also then have different sections. For example, the next section is production and use of videos for requirements validation. And again, we have a list here. And a third section on production and use of videos for requirements documentation. And now I could select um, also from this, we can see also who contributed to this literature list. So here, Oliver Karras contributed 70, 57%, Kia Etina Fafar, 23%, um, and some other contributors. And uh, we can also then use such a literature list to create um, a comparison of, of the state of the art. So you can select here, for example, several of these publications and then um, create a start a comparison, basically, where you describe these um, um, studies, these publications in more detail and create such a more comprehensive semantic descriptions of the contributions here. That's uh, another feature. Um, another feature I wanted to show you are smart reviews. Um, so you can also reach them via the view and smart reviews tab. Smart reviews are basically like review or overview articles, um, giving an overview of the state of the art um, by including several of these um, uh, comparisons. So they are like real articles. So we have also different sections, like here an introduction section, an overview of scholarly identifier systems. And then we have sections which basically are created by uh, integrating comparisons of the state of the art, like this one here, where we have a comparison of scholarly identifier systems. And this comparison is directly integrated from the Open Research Knowledge Graph. And once the Open Research Knowledge Graph updates, also this comparison will update. And then um, we have an ontology basically for this comparison. Basically, we describe the properties here and have a description of these properties. And we can have another section on bibliographic scholarly knowledge graphs, for example, with an introductory text. And then again, a comparison um, and an ontology section and so on and so forth. So you can actually write real um, survey and review articles directly on the ORKG. Uh, so when you click uh, the download button, actually you can generate also a PDF document, you can export it, um, um, and you can directly edit it online. So once you are logged in, in the Open Research Node Graph, uh, we can actually click the edit button and then directly edit these smart reviews online. Um, in the Open Research Node Graph, you can double click in the different uh, sections. Um, 
You can add new sections here with this plus bar. We have different types of sections like uh, textual content, comparisons, visualizations, resources, properties, or ontologies. And then inside the sections, you can click and you can use Markdown and directly edit uh, the content in these kind of sections. You can also then include references here. So you can either use BibTeX references or even uh, DOIs directly, and uh, we will create the corresponding references inside for you there. And on the right hand side, you see the um, section type. So here that's a text section. Here we have a comparison section below an ontology section. So this is another feature which we recently added uh, to the Open Research Node Graph and which we now want to use, especially for integrating the Open Research Node Graph with um, publishing platforms, with open access uh, publishing platforms uh, to make, uh, to integrate the ORKG also with traditional uh, workflows, scientific workflows. Let's now maybe look at some examples of um, um, comparisons, especially in social sciences and humanities. So a colleague of us, for example, created this um, overview comparison on um, attitudes towards ICT in the PISA studies of 2015 and 2018. Uh, so she organized here the content from different uh, studies which were done on the PISA data sets, especially with regard to ICT. Uh, attitudes um, in these um, in these uh, PISA studies, and uh, we have here a large number of these uh, studies, and correspondingly described the contribution, the gist of the contribution in such a comparison. And this can be used then um, to create a dashboard and an overview. On the one hand, we have here this tabular overview, um, but we created here a domain-specific overview, uh, which makes it even more intuitive. Um, to get an overview, for example, indicating this on, on a map uh, and showing how many studies target a particular country here. Um, or below, we can select specific sun countries for specific um, areas and um, basically filter the list of studies. And we can then also see here the positive relationships according to the number of studies, negative um, relationships or attitudes from these studies and have such a domain specific uh, visualization basically here for these different studies. And um, then there's also a faceted browsing uh, where you can also select um, different of these attributes from the studies and then see the concrete studies there. So this is one example which is created using the OKG API. So we have an application programming interface where you can program and develop applications on top of the RKG um, in Jupyter notebooks in Python. Um, this is one, one example of this. And then let's maybe look at some other examples. So here we have a comparison of mixed languages in Belarus. Uh, so there's also social sciences, uh, linguistics, um, I suppose, where we have different studies and then a description of these different studies, um, like the methods which were used in these studies, the population which was analyzed, the regional coverage here, uh, for example, in Minsk, in Belarus overall, um, or also the sample sizes and the conclusions of the author. So that's another example of a um, visualization comparison in linguistics. There is also one here in social and behavioral sciences, a comparison on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on well-being. There were different studies which we can see here. And uh, this comparison basically gives an overview on these different studies, uh, overall 21, and um, describes basically the content of these different studies in terms of which type part of the population which addressed the subgroups, uh, for example, the second one here, particularly uh, addressing women. Um, then the data which was used, either own surveyed or other data, the geographical coverage, the temporal coverage, um, and so on and so forth. And this um, uh, allows like a nice comparison of these uh, different social science studies here related to well-being and the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's another example comparing the gender structure of parliamentary elites in three countries. This is a relatively small comparison. Um, 
or we have here a comparison of um, a collection of libraries of third places. There are different studies and they discuss uh, different conclusions, methods, research problems, um, institutions, uh, materials which are used, results, sample sizes again, uh, physical space size of the libraries. And um, again, this uh, shows, gives an overview on these different studies related to these different attributes and properties. So these are just some examples of um, comparisons in social science and humanities. But as I said, we need more of these examples and um, need to demonstrate um, in, in a better way how it can be used for different use cases in social sciences and humanities. What about future, future development um, and deployment? So we have a long-term research and development agenda with the ORKG. Uh, we have the resources and funding to work in the next decade uh, with a sizable team on the ORKG. But of course, we want to do this uh, together with a lot of partners around the world. So it would be great if we could collaborate with you. We envision to onboard 10,000s of users in the next years. Um, so hopefully or ideally, the RKG will be used by most of the researchers at some point in time, like Wikipedia is used by many um, internet um, searchers or people using the internet as an information source. We want to make the RKG a knowledge graph for research, which is used by almost all researchers in the future. And of course, we need to develop a lot of features. So planned features include, for example, more automation, better use of NLP, AI, machine learning, where we combine really human and machine intelligence. Um, unfortunately, it will not be possible to populate the knowledge graph in a completely automated fashion. So we really have to intertwine human curation with um, um, machine learning and artificial intelligence approaches to support humans. And the more training data we have, the more maybe AI can take over. But so far, uh, the training data is not yet sufficient to really populate the knowledge graph. We also want to work on better discussion features for uh, researchers on notifications and updates so that you get uh, notified when new research to your area of interest appears in the open research knowledge graph. You want to integrate it with uh, social networks. Um, I already mentioned also the integration with other publication and research infrastructures like open access repositories, research data management, and so on. And we also want to better um, facilitate the embedding of content and personal and organizational websites so that you can use the ORKG as a content management system, but you can embed the content then in your own environment and export it. We already allow export to LaTeX, to CSV, to Word, to a lot of different formats, um, but we want to improve on that even further. Yeah, with this, I would like to conclude my talk, uh, so we have um, a sizable team. We will hire also more people in the next year. Uh, so here you see some of the, or the people involved in developing the ORKG. We have a number of software engineers, doctoral researchers, postdocs um, who work on ORKG related topics. Um, and as a conclusion, um, I think we need to really invent, reinvent scholarly communication uh, knowledge graphs are perfectly suited to capture research contributions in a structured and semantic way, making them human and machine interpretable. With our open research knowledge graph um, initiative, we aim to establish a registry for research contributions, and we need to um, synergistically combine um, human expert and machine intelligence, and that's still also a research challenge we are working on. So. Please um, stay tuned uh, so you can um, always um, use and get involved with the ORKG. We have a mailing list, a forum, um, a Skype chat also, and a lot of documentation already available. Um, thank you very much for your attention and feel free to get in touch with us. Um, thank you very much.